This is Tamara from MooglyBlog.com, and in this video, I will be demonstrating how to crochet the Big Bloom Blanket, which is a free pattern you'll find on MooglyBlog.com. Please go to the link in the description. There you will find both right and left-handed video tutorials, as well as a link to the written pattern and all of the supplies you need. To make this pattern, I used two skeins each of three different colors of Karen Simply Soft. Now, one note about Karen Simply Soft, here you can see I used an ombre, one of the solids and one of the heathers, and the solid balls or skeins rather are an ounce bigger than the other types of Karen Simply Soft. So if you choose to choose your own colors, of course, for this pattern, you'll want to make sure to have enough of each color. In addition to the yarn, you will need a US eye hook, 5.5 millimeters. This one is Clover Amore, and I do especially like this hook for working with this yarn because it has a more rounded tip. You'll also, of course, need scissors, a yarn needle, and all your standard crochet supplies. Let's take a look at the finished Big Bloom Blanket. Okay, here we have the finished blanket, which is about 48 inches wide, way too big for my table here, but there are lots of pictures of the complete blanket on mooglyblog.com at the link in the description. This blanket is made from the center out, and the first four rows are just standard double crochet rounds. Um, start with 12, 24, 36, 48. The normal way you'd make a flat circle. After that, we add this stitch pattern for these sort of spokes that create that great bloom look, as well as when we change colors, we'll be working in uh, back post double crochet stitches, which adds a little bit more texture and life to this pattern. Then when we come to the edge, if I can pull that out down here, you can see we do round it out. We fill in those little gaps in between and then add just a really simple and great twisted single crochet edging. So let's go ahead and get started crocheting our big bloom blanket. Okay, so we begin our blanket, of course, with color A. For me, this was the Saturday Blue Jeans Ombre colorway of Karen Simply Soft. Now, as I said, the first four rounds are just standard double crochet rounds. So you can go to the written pattern for that or just work till you've got those four rounds, 48 stitches made. Um, if you are not familiar with how to do the magic circle or work in the round or double crochet, there are separate video tutorials for this linked in the pattern. But for this video tutorial, we're gonna go ahead and skip on to round five. Okay, so to begin round five, we're going to start with a chain of two, and those will not count as a stitch. Then we're going to skip that first stitch, the one we joined to, and we're going to work a double crochet in the next stitch. And this double crochet is where we want to place our stitch marker. And that will help us when we change colors in the next round when we know where to begin. So after that double crochet, then we work two double crochets in the next stitch. So there's one and two. Then we double crochet in the next stitch, like so. And then we chain two and slip stitch in the next stitch. And we want to make this a slip stitch that we can work into on the next round. So my tip for that, because slip stitches have a knack for getting really tight, is to go ahead and pull that loop through and pause for a minute and maybe, maybe wiggle your hook before you go on to pull that loop through that stitch. Make sure you don't add any tension to your working yarn, don't pull back on it. That will tighten up that slip stitch quite a bit. And we really want that to be nice and open. So then we're going to chain two. And with that, we're ready to begin the repeat that will take us all the way the rest around this round. So we double crochet in the next stitch, two double crochets in the stitch after that, one and two, double crochet in the stitch after that, and then chain two and slip stitch in the next stitch. Again, we're gonna need to work into that, so make sure to pull it up a little bit bigger than you might normally do with a slip stitch, and then chain two again. And then we're ready to do that repeat again. So this creates that little shape that's going to give us our bloom look, and we're just gonna keep doing that all the way around. So I will meet you when we get to the end of round five. Okay, so as we work our way around, when we finish our last repeat here, basically we've got our double crochet, two double crochets in the next, double crochet in the one after that, and then we're just going to chain two, and then we are going to slip stitch in that first stitch, that very first one we joined to, where we've got our chain two coming out of. We just wanna go right back in that stitch and put another slip stitch in there, and then we can break our yarn and be done for now with our first color, and then we'll be adding our second color. 
Okay, so we're ready to begin round six using our next color. For me, this was the dark country blue. What we're going to do is join with a back post double crochet around that marked stitch, the one with the stitch marker in it. So to do that, we'll hold on to the end of the yarn in our new color here with your hook hand non-hook fingers. Then we yarn over twice with that yarn, and then we're going to pick up our project and go around that marked stitch just as we normally would for a back post double crochet. So we come from behind the stitch and go around the post of it, yarn over and pull that loop through. Then we yarn over and pull through two and yarn over and pull through two. That is how to join with a back post double crochet. If you're not comfortable with that, you can join with a slip stitch and chain three if you prefer. Then we're going to work two back post double crochets around the next stitch. So to do that, we just yarn over again, go around the next stitch there, just as we did before for a back post double crochet, make one, and then I'm going to yarn over and go right around that same stitch as before, just right underneath the one I made previously. So we just finish that up, and then we've got two back post double crochets made in that same stitch. Then we are going to work a back post double crochet around each remaining stitch until we get to that chain two. So this is written this way because it's a repeat that we use throughout the pattern, but uh, for right now, that means just two more stitches. As you can imagine, this will have to keep growing as we make our blanket. So back post double crochet around each of those stitches until you get to that chain two space, or that chain two right there. And then we are going to chain two again, one, two, and slip stitch right in that chain two space. Just put your hook right in the space there underneath that chain two, and go ahead and make a slip stitch. Then we double crochet in the slip stitch right down here. So right in that slip stitch itself, this is why we wanted it to be a little bit looser, we're going to work our double crochet right into that slip stitch, like so. Then we slip stitch into the next chain two space on the other side here, chain two again, and we're ready to begin our next section. Back post double crochet around the next double crochet, then two back post double crochets around the next one. So we go in for that first one, and then immediately just go right back around that stitch and make a second one, like so. And you can give them a little tug, kind of pull them up so they're the same height there, and then just double crochet around each of the stitches till we get to that, to that next chain two space. So there's those. We're at our next chain two space, so we're going to chain two, slip stitch right into that chain two space, double crochet in the slip stitch down at the bottom of our little valley here, slip stitch to the next chain two space, chain two again, and begin again with our back post double crochets. So that is how you get the look there, and we keep increasing because we've got our two back post double crochets increase there for round six. So we just continue this all the way around for round six, and I will see you when we get to the end. Okay, so I've reached the end of round six, and I've got one more double crochet here to make down in our valley before I join to the next chain two, and then chain two and join to that first uh, stitch we made, the first chainless starting double crochet, or in this case, back post chainless starting double crochet right there. So I just wanna point out, this is where we had those two slip stitches worked, sort of where we finished off our round five. And I haven't woven this in end in yet, um, but if I did, it would probably be pretty tight. So where you work this slip or this double crochet in particular is kind of up to you. Uh, might be easier if you don't actually weave in that end first, then you can work it right into that one, sort of right in there, or you can try and kind of go into the original slip stitch that you joined the previous round with. It's really up to you at this point. You just kind of want to stick a double crochet in there wherever it looks good, like so. So you can see that just kind of works right over our end there. I actually joined to the one we slip stitched with, but whatever one is easier for you is totally fine. Then finally, we can slip stitch into this next chain two space and chain two, and then we'll join right to that top of that um, back post double crochet. It wasn't, a, I guess it was a starting one, not a chainless one, but it was a starting double crochet worked back post style. So at any rate, however you made that first stitch of the round, go ahead, get your hook under those loops, and slip stitch to it to finish round six. 
for round seven. We'll be continuing with this color. But I do want to point out at this point, it looks like it's going to ruffle quite a bit. I found the finished blanket didn't ruffle, but if it seems like it's ruffling at first, don't panic. That's normal. It will flatten out a little bit more as you go. So round seven begins with a chainless starting double crochet, probably why I had it on my mind, where we pull up our hook to the height of a double crochet stitch, yarn over with the loop itself, go right back into that first stitch, yarn over, pull up a loop, yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, pull through two. If you need a closer look at this stitch, I do have a separate video tutorial for it linked at this video tutorial and on the Moogly YouTube channel. I know this yarn's a little dark, so that might make it a little more difficult too. So like I said, you can check out the video tutorial for that specifically if you'd like. I do always like to put a stitch marker in the top of that stitch. It just makes it a little bit easier to find here as I work my way around. Then for this repeat, we're going to double crochet in each stitch until there is two until there are two stitches remaining before this chain two space. So we've already made our stitch in this first stitch. So we'll go to the next one and just double crochet on a cross until we've got two stitches left right before that chain two space. Round seven, which we're working on right now, is going to be identical to round nine as well. So I've actually gone too far. Oops, I've got two stitches left there. I've already worked one stitch in it. So let me pull that back out. Two stitches right before that chain two space. I'm going to kind of hold it up there so it's a little easier to see against the white. There we are. So in this next stitch, I want to work two double crochets. So there's one and two. Oops, there we go. If I pull up a little bit more yarn here and then one double crochet in that last stitch before the chain two space. Then chain two, slip stitch right in that chain two space. There we are. And now we're going to double crochet right in the top of that double crochet. We don't have to work into slip stitches anymore, so that's really nice. So just double crochet right in the top of that one, slip stitch to the next chain two space, chain two, and then begin again. Double crochet in each stitch across until there are two more before the chain two space. Not too many here in round seven, but as we grow, of course, that will get bigger and bigger. So we've got two stitches left there right before that chain two space. So we'll work two double crochets in the next stitch. One, two, a double crochet in that last stitch chain two again, slip stitch right in that chain two space, like so, double crochet right in the top of that double crochet down in the valley here, slip stitch in the next chain two space, chain two, and begin again. So we're going to continue that all the way around, and of course we'll finish off just like we did in the previous one, although this time we do get to work into a double crochet. You'll just slip stitch into that one, chain two, and join to that first one right there. So I will see you when we have finished round seven. Okay, so at the end of round seven, you should have 84 double crochets total, and we're ready to begin round eight. Round eight is going to start much the same way. We're going to start with that chainless starting double crochet, or if you prefer, if you don't like making this stitch, you can use a chain three instead, or whatever double crochet substitute you like. The point is just to get a double crochet in there. So I am going to move that stitch marker right on up to that stitch. Optional, but I find it helpful. And then we're going to work two double crochets in the next stitch. So there's one, two, and then we just double crochet on across until we get to that next chain two space. So basically, the only difference between rounds seven and eight is where that increase lies. You just want to switch sides so that you don't end up with all your increases on one side of your petals. So just as before, as soon as we get to that chain two space, we'll chain two, slip stitch right on in there. Oops, there we go. Double crochet right in the top of that double crochet. Slip stitch into the next chain two space, chain two, and start again. Just make sure you get a double crochet in that first stitch and then two double crochets in the stitch after that. And then you can just double crochet right on across until you get to that next chain two space. So after you've finished round eight, you'll repeat round seven, where we've got our increase on the, on the furthest side of our petals, and then repeat round eight, where we've got our increase kind of right up front there, and then we'll be ready for round 11. 
Okay, now obviously I haven't made 10 rounds here, but for the sake of time, I'm going to go ahead and move on to round 11. To begin round 11, we're going to start just as we have the previous few rounds here with a chainless starting double crochet or chain three, whichever you prefer. And then for this one, you definitely want to go ahead and use that stitch marker. We're going to refer to the marked stitch in our next round, so we want to have that one marked. Then we are simply going to work even. So that means we are going to double crochet in each double crochet until we get to that first chain two space or the next chain two space as the rest of the round will go. There we are. So there's our last stitch on that pedal. So we're at our chain two space. So we'll chain two, slip stitch in the chain two, double crochet in the top of that double crochet slip stitch in the next chain two, chain two again, and then just double crochet in each stitch across. So we will not increase the number of stitches between rounds 10 and 11. So for round 11, you should have a total of 120 stitches. Okay, so if we take another look at the finished blanket, round 11 takes us to here. Then we just repeat exactly what we did rounds six through 11 for each set of stripes as we work our way out. So that means while I've written this to be a 48 inch pattern uh, using a particular number of skeins, you could keep going. You could make this thing just as big as you want. You just wanna keep repeating rounds six through 11 for each stripe. You're just going to be adding you know, increases there in rounds six, seven, eight, nine, and 10. And then those round 11 repeats will always be worked even. Then you start again with those back post double crochets, but it's always a little bit easier because you only had to work into the slip stitches when you started that first set of stripes there. So after you've made all your sets of stripes and you're ready to um, get close to your edging, what I did was for my last stripe, and I did this in particular so that I would use just two skeins of each of those three colors, I stopped after a round 10 repeat here. Um, I was running out of this color. If you wanted to though, you could absolutely keep going, finish it off with a round 11 repeat. I really like to end it with a round 10 repeat here, um, just cause then we can work even for our edging rounds, but it's up to you, it won't really matter. The next couple rounds here for the edging are going to work no matter where you stop on this blanket. So let's go ahead and take a look at those final couple of rounds together. Okay, so in the written pattern, the last three rounds begin with round 47. So when I made the previous round, I did mark that first chainless starting double crochet or that very first double crochet. And then we're going to take our last color and we're joined to, going to join with a back post single crochet around the marked stitch. So to do that, I like to start by just making a small loop. See, so just sort of a folded over loop right there on my hook and pull that in close. Then I'm going to go around that marked stitch from behind, around the stitch, pull up a loop, and then just yarn over and pull through two to finish that one off. Then I'll go ahead and move that stitch marker right into that stitch so that it keeps it open and easy to work into in the next round there. I'll just go ahead and put that stitch marker right under both of those top loops, like so. Then I am just going to back post a single crochet around each stitch to the next chain two space. So we just go around, pull up a loop, and finish our single crochet. And of course, if you're making a full size blanket, you're going to have a lot more stitches to back post single crochet around here. But here we are as my last one before I've got that chain two space. So now I'm just going to skip the chain two. I'm not going to slip stitch into it or anything like that. I'm just gonna skip right over it and work two double crochets right in the next stitch, right in that double crochet that's in our valley. So there's one, and there's two. Then I'll just skip right over that next chain two space and work a back post single crochet around the next double crochet. So you can see I've pulled my stitches in a little bit there and that just pulls it right together. So that's how we continue on around here. Just back post single crochet around each of the upper level double crochets, if you will, and then put two double crochets in each of the ones in between the chain twos. So here on our little swatch, we're back at that chain two space. So I can just wrap right down to that lower level double crochet, the one at the bottom of the valley, work two double crochets right in there, and then just continue with back post single crochets on around. So I will see you at the end of round 47. Okay, at the end of round 47, you should have a total of 492 stitches. So we're just going to join right in that marked stitch 
be a lot easier probably if I took the stitch marker out. There we go. So I'll join it there with a slip stitch. Sort of pull that end there out of the way. And then we're ready to begin round 48. Round 48 is simply chain one and half double crochet in each stitch around. So we're going to still have 492 stitches and we're just going to work all the way around our blanket with half double crochets. Then of course we join to that first half double crochet and we're ready for round 49. So rather than demo all of that, I'm just gonna pull those stitches out and pretend we've got our half double crochets already made and then we're ready for round 49, the last round of our blanket. To make round 49, we're going to chain one and make a twisted single crochet in each stitch around. So once again, we're working even, still 492 stitches. So we go into that first one, pull up a loop, stop with two loops left on our hook, pull them up a little bit higher maybe than you normally would for a single crochet. You want them a little bit looser here. Then we're simply going to spin our hook all the way around. You can see that puts a little twist in the stitch and pulls those loops closer together. We're going to yarn over and pull through to finish the stitch. We go into the next stitch, pull up that loop, pull it up nice and high again, spin our whole hook, yarn over, and pull through. You can see how if you don't pull those loops up, it would be really difficult to pull the hook through there right at the end. There we go. Now, this essentially mimics the crab stitch or reverse single crochet. So if you're familiar with those and prefer that, you can absolutely do that. You could skip the twisted single crochet edging altogether and just have it end with a nice row of half double crochets. Or of course, you can add whatever edging you like. But that is how to crochet all the rounds of the Big Bloom Blanket. And here it is all finished for you, that twisted single crochet edging. Like I said, it gets, has the same look as the crab stitch or reverse single crochet, but you could skip it altogether if you don't like that look or use whichever stitch you prefer or add your own border. Since it's just an even row of half double crochet right before then, it really is open to do whatever you like. So I hope you've enjoyed this video tutorial. I hope you'll give the Big Bloom Blanket a try. Please do go to the link in the description where you will find a link to both the right and left-handed video tutorials, as well as all the supplies you need, including this beautiful Karen Simply Soft. There are so many different kinds of Karen Simply Soft. I think 11 different versions currently available on your inspirations that you can mix and match them all to really create a Big Bloom Blanket that is just for you. So thank you so much for watching. Please don't forget to subscribe and have a great day, everybody. Thank you.